Okay, so in this video, we're gonna have a look at working out a percentage of an amount, and we're gonna do that specifically looking at it without a calculator. So the question that you can see on the screen is the type of question that we're gonna build up to where we've got two and a half percent in our percentages, and how we go about doing that, again, without a calculator. So with that being said, let's get started. Okay, so the first question that we're gonna have a look at here is working out 35% of 80. Now, when it comes to all of these percentages, my first step is always the same, and that is to work out 10%. So to start with here, we're gonna write down what 10% is. So 10% is nice and easy for us to find. You take the number, which in this case is 80, and you just divide it by 10. And that just means, essentially, you can do your little trick, which is to hop the decimal in. So if you hop the decimal in over the zero, you get that 10% is equal to eight, which is always very nice when it does end in a zero, because obviously you can apply the trick, which is just to get rid of the zero there. But 10% is eight, and now we need to figure out how we're gonna get to 35%. Now, because it's a 5% in there as well, we're also gonna to have to find a 5%. And that's easy enough now that we have 10% because we can just halve eight, and that would give us that 5% is equal to four. We now have everything we need in order to, in order to build up to 35%. We know that 10% is eight, so if we wanna to get to 30%, we would want to have three of those, and the additional 5% there, which would get that up to 35% in total. So you can apply different methods here in order to get to 35%. You could either just add together the pieces that you need, or you could do some multiplication as well. And what's a nice easy method that you can do is just say, okay, we want three of the eight, uh, the 10%, so eight, another eight, another eight, and a 5%, which is a four, and just add them all together. Okay, you might argue actually it's a bit easier just to times eight by three, but we get eight, 16, 24, plus the four is 28, and that would be our final answer, 28. So there we go, nice and easy, okay, you work out 10%, and then obviously just think about whether you need the 5% as well, which for the, you know, for these few questions that we're gonna have a look at, we're gonna be using that 5%, and then you just build it up to the percentage in the question. So there we go, that's our 35%, let's have a look at another one. Okay, so working out 45% of 64. It's a little trickier here because it doesn't end in a zero, but just straight away, let's think about our process. So we're gonna work out 10% straight away, and we'll work that out in just a second. We're also gonna need 5%, so we'll have to work that out as well, which again, we'll work out in just a second. And then we're gonna to need to get to 45%. So in terms of what I'm gonna actually need here, I'm gonna need four lots of the 10% and one of the 5%. Four lots of 10 would be 40%, one of the fives is 5%, so combine there, that's gonna give us our 45%. So let's work out our 10%. Now we've got 64, so to get 10%, divide it by 10, so hop the decimal in, and we get 6.4. So our 10% here is gonna be 6.4, and again, we're gonna to wanna to halve that for 5%, and again, if you are struggling to halve these numbers at any point, don't forget, you can always just divide it by two using bus stop just to the side if you need to, two goes into six three times, keep your decimal point in place, and two goes into four twice, so 3.2. And there we go, 5% is gonna equal 3.2. So we want four of those 6.4s, and we want one of the 3.2s. And now again, you could multiply 6.4 by four, or you could just add them all together using column addition. So we want four of those. Again, if we go beyond 40%, you've probably got quite a few there, and you probably wanna multiply them instead but not too difficult for us to just add those together. So what do we get? Four, eight, 12, 16 plus the two is 18, so carry the one. And then six, 12, 18, 24, 27 plus the one is 28. So we get 28.8. And there we go, there is our final answer. And that is 45% of 64. Again, just being very careful when you do that. Obviously, I've added them together quite quickly, so take your time with it. But just as I said before as well, you could actually have just done 6.4 and multiplied it by 4 instead if you prefer to use a multiplication method. But if you are going to do that, don't forget to take the decimal out before you multiply. So we would have instead done 64 times 4 and then hopped the decimal in at the end and then added the extra 3.2. 
So arguably that might be a little bit longer than just adding it together. I think if you just add them together, it's pretty quick and everybody's normally pretty happy to do column addition. But there we go, that's how we're gonna work out a percentage of an amount where there was a decimal involved and also where there wasn't a decimal involved in the previous question. So let's have a look at some for you to have a go at. Okay, so there's four questions here for you to have a go at. The ones on the left there are slightly easier as they end in a zero, and the two on the right there do involve some decimals. So pause the video, have a go at these four, and we'll go over the answers in just a sec. Right, okay then, so for the first one. So 10%, and always write down your 10%. 10% is gonna be six. 5% is going to be half of that, which is three. And we only want 15%, so we only wanted the one six and the one three there. So 15% was equal to nine. And there's our final answer for the first one. On to the one below, if we carry on with the slightly easier question. So 10%, if we divide that by 10 is 12. We want 5% again, so half of that is gonna be six. And then we want four of the 12s and a six. So it's up to you if you wanna multiply. I don't think multiplying six by four is too difficult this time. And we're gonna want one of the sixes. So in total there, let's see what we've got. Four times 12 is 48. Then we've also got the six. Add it all together and we get 54. So 54 was our final answer for that question there. Right, there we go. Hopefully you're getting these. On to the next one, 35% of 82. Well, 10% is gonna equal 8.2 when we hop the decimal in. 5%, half of that is gonna be 4.1, half of 8.2. And then we want, let's have a look, three of the 8.2s to get to 30% and one of the 5%. So we can add those all together. I'm gonna to use column addition this time. So what do we have? 8.2, 8.2, another 8.2 and a 4.1. If we add those all together, two, four, six, seven, and then eight, 16, 24, plus the four is 28. So 28.7 for the answer for that one. All right, there we go. And on to our final question, 65% of 64. So we've got quite a lot to add together if we do column addition for this one. We've got 10%, which is gonna equal 6.4. Half of that for our 5%. So 5% is equal to 3.2. And then we want six of those 6.4s and a 3.2. We're gonna add them all up. So let's just write them all together. 6.4, six times. Can be a little bit annoying when you've got all of these to write in. How many is that? Five, six, and we want the 3.2. Don't even know if I'll fit that all in. Let's have a look. So four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, 26. Carry the two and then 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, 39, 41. So it's 41.6, just about fit that in. So 41.6. And there we go, and there's our final answer. Right, there you go, so something for you to think about there. And obviously you can decide for yourself which method you prefer, whether you wanna add them all together at the end, or whether you wanna use multiplication maybe to collect, the, collect those all together, because we could have done six times the 6.4 and then added the 3.2, and that's obviously fine as well. As long as we get into that final answer, you can use whichever method you find more appropriate for yourself. Right, okay, so as we mentioned at the start of the video, we're also gonna have a look at when we have to use a 2.5%. So let's have a look at one of those now. Okay, here we go, so finding out, finding out or working out 7.5% of 40. Now we're not gonna change anything with our method here, so we're still gonna find our original 10%, and 10% in this case is four. Now, again, we wanna to get to a two and a half or a seven and a half in this case percentage, which is gonna mean going down to 5% again. So half of four is two. And what's really nice here, you might not have already known this, but if you halve 5%, that's gonna give us 2.5%. And if we have two, we get one. So two and a half percent is equal to one. Now we can think about how we get to seven and a half percent. And to do that, we're gonna want one of our five percents and the additional two and a half percent. And five and two and a half adds up to a total of 7.5. So we want the two, we want the one. And if we add those two together, we end up with three. So our final answer for this one would be three. So that's a nice easy one to get started there, but just thinking about how we get that two and a half percent and then potentially using that with any sort of combination, whether that be 12 and a half percent, 17 and a half percent, or even 22 and a half percent potentially, but just thinking about how we would get there. So let's have a look at one more before we have a go. 
Okay, so this one says work out 12.5% of 160. So again, we'll work out 10%. So we get our 10% here is going to be 16 when we divide it by 10. Again, we'll halve it for 5%. So that gives us 8. And again, halving that for 2.5% would give us a value of 4. So how do we get to 12.5%? Well, 12.5%, we could use the 10% and then the additional 2.5%. And that would give us our 12.5%. So again, for this one, we just need the 16 and the four. We just have to add those two together. That gives us an answer of 20. And there we go, final answer. Right, so as you can see, these ones aren't actually too bad. In order to get a 2.5%, you just have to find your 10%, halve it for 5%, and then halve it again for 2.5%, and then just carefully think about your combinations that you're gonna put together in order to get to that final answer. Right, so there's two questions for you to have a go at before we finish. Let's have a look at those now. Okay, so here's your final two questions, working out 12.5% of 80 and 17.5% of 140. So pause the video there, have a go at these two, and we'll go over the answers in a sec. Right, okay, so for the first one, 10% is going to equal 8, and then if we start halving that, so 5% is going to equal 4, and 2.5% is going to equal 2. And we want 12.5%, so we want the 10%, and we want the two and a half percent, which means we're gonna have eight and two to add together, which gives us 10. So 12 and a half percent of 80 is equal to 10. There you go, hopefully you got that one. And onto the last one, 17 and a half percent of 140. Well, 10% is gonna equal 14. 5%, half of that is going to equal seven. And two and a half percent is gonna be half of that. So half of seven is 3.5. And there we go, you've got your all your pieces now in order to get to the 17.5%. Now this is quite an interesting one, so I hope you got this one. But to get 17.5%, we actually want all three of these. We want the 10% plus the 5%, which would get us to 15%, plus the 25 which would get us to 17.5%. So all we actually have to do is add all of these three together, and they're already lined up nicely for us. So we obviously have the 0.5 at the end. We've got the four, the seven, and the three, which adds up to 14, so carry the one. And then we've got the additional 10 there, so that's 24.5. So 24.5 is 17.5% of 140. Okay, there we go. So obviously you can have lots of different questions on this, but the process is always gonna be the same. A few things that you'll have noticed throughout all these questions, I always write down what 10% is, I keep it really nice and clear, and then I obviously add together just the ones that I need. So really good skills here, obviously, if you're practicing for your exam, make sure that you always write everything down and then build up to that percentage that you need. And that's obviously looking at working out a percentage without a calculator. So don't forget to check out the rest of the series on fractions, decimals and percentages they're all linked in the description below hopefully you enjoyed that if you did please like please comment please subscribe and I'll see you for the next one